or not. And a big question I actually wanted to pose before we hopped into it was uh, that Earth Spirit here. Now, EG, a confident team, happy to go against, uh, you know, the likes of a new Earth Spirit, but Team Secret do play it in a way that's different than any other team out there, putting more priority into the farm and putting it in the mid lane. And I guess my question is already going to be answered here is Earth Spirit once again will be let through. Secret to go back for it again. And this time, EG, after grabbing up the Darkseer, are going to instead take the Enigma for their second pick. And by the way, uh, I posed this question. We didn't have a clear answer in the first game. EG had selection priority, and uh, they decided to choose Dire over first pick. So in this game, Secret, Secret chose first pick. Yeah, Secret chose first, first pick, and EG get a run back at Dire once again. I guess EG are happy with that. They get the their pick again. The one they wanted in the first game. I mean, this is the adjustment that they made. So we see them going for the Enigma early. And um, do you guys think that Secret should just try to outgrade it? Or they should try to punish what it. What can you agree though? You can't. With Doom? Yeah, like I don't Doom? think you. Can it's the fastest. They, they try, you think? I mean, not as uh, obviously not as fast, but you still run a jungle. Is there anyone else that can contest aside from? Nah, Mirana? Bounty and Mirana are both the best at contesting jungle. Oh, there's still enchanters. Yep, there's still enchanters that can contest, and you can pressure the lane. It's hard, especially in the dire jungle, mm -hmm. to contest the Enigma when it's farming the rightmost camps. Uh -huh. You have to commit so far in. To actually even access the Enigma. A rewind here is again Team Secret will now be pulling out the Lone yeah. Druid once more for This Misery. is this is the system they've been running. When they put Earth Spirit mid, their off laner definitely has to be someone that takes a lot of farm priority. I, I mentioned this before. Like every time they have this type of lineup, Misery would definitely be on a very farm orientated hero so that they balance out their cause. Just run the bear and block an Enigma camp every single cycle. Just run it in, block the 30 second camp. <laughs> Seems plan a, Go and plant a ward in one camp, and then just use the bear as a moving ward. Get techies and just put mines in each of the neutral yeah. camps. You know? Doesn't it not block anymore? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. think it blocks <laughs> It's not a hero I play very often. <laughs> and I haven't seen very often. Uh, That'd be so funny if it. someone tried that, and then you just see all the camps spawn, you're just like, uh. <laughs> I was about to say you're a good guy for not picking techies, but then I realized you're an Earth Spirit player, so. Never Thanks, mind. bro. I pick techies. Yeah, I know. You can <laughs> I know Dakota, you mentioned... And you think it's fun too, that's yeah. the worst. You mentioned the Oracle for the last game, uh, against the Darkseer and against the Bat Rider as well. It was, yeah, it was not even just that, but even the, the Spectre, it works so nicely with, uh, you know, a, a Heart Candidate. I mean, when you're able to pull out a False Promise, let's say that the Heart was triggered. I mean, even with, what is it, 9 seconds at level 3, it has plenty of time to come off of cooldown. And someone already had already done the math, but you essentially get 1,000 HP from your Heart Regen when you double it with the False Promise. How does that work with this version? Like, do you do damage with You still version? do damage, yes, yeah. you still do While? damage. Yes, yeah, um, yes. That's cool. It's very good with Spectre, so. But, I, I mean, Pilot Die did an MVP performance on the Lion, so I can't really fault them on that. Not according to the audience? <laughs> Not according to the audience. And it's this time, time, it's time to ban that Spectre that <laughs> <laughs> apparently completely owned last game. <laughs> Better not face it again. Yeah, I do. I do actually think they could try to ban it, but it's nah, by nature just it's just a different. Instead. Yeah, it's it's not a big deal. By nature, it is a very different game now that EG are running this Enigma jungle compared to last game. Um, I, yeah. The interesting for me to see here is that we were talking about earlier how they first picked the Darkseer in game one and they did it against uh, Fnatic as mm -hmm. well. And in the anticipation perhaps that the enemy team would run a jungler and he could get the one on two matchup, it looks like they just value the hero that highly. They pick it now together with the best jungler on by themselves. It, maybe now expecting that he will be playing a one on three lane, but they just still think it's that good. He can't really reti retire to the jungle when Enigma is taking it though. So if Darkseer gets punished, he like has very limited farm access early on. Oh, we forgot about Sand King. In terms of contesting Enigma's farm, or by contesting, I mean equalize. Equalize, yeah. yeah. Just run into Enigma and Sandstorm. <laughs> Seems good. Seems good. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's great. <laughs> yeah, but maybe. Do you think that EG is like considering whether they are going to ban the Enchantress here? That's why they're taking such a long time. Mm. Could be. No. Nope. And do you think that they should hop on the opportunity right. to pick up that? Ah, oh, they can now. They already have the Enigma. Wait, they, they, they had the bench in all their die games today and yesterday. And now they're actually banning it themselves. So they don't want to pick the bench and they don't want Secret to have the bench so that they can ca cancel the black hole easily. Why didn't they do the Faceless Void opener that we saw some teams do versus Earth Spirit? Do you think Darkseer is significantly better for EG over the Faceless Void? I actually think their Void is disgustingly good. By theirs, I mean universes. <laughs> Yeah, like I mean the way they played around it too. 
But uh, anyway, I guess it's not a question for this. Doesn't that doesn't that matchup go both ways though? It's a Earth Spirit is one of the better heroes against Void. You've got long duration silence. You got a long distance stun, so you can catch him out and kill him in the mid game. But if you don't time dilation, it just destroys him. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, I guess it works both ways. Anyways, evil geniuses. Wait, while while you now now that we're on that topic, dropping the stone remnant doesn't have a cooldown, right? There's zero cooldown on casting remnant, correct? Correct. So if you're time dilated and magnetize is running, you can still extend magnetize at the very least. Which as far as I'm aware, yeah, it should still work. Biggest part of his damage output in team fights later on. So do they want Sven again? They're taking mighty long time for this already with five seconds left of reserve time. A throwback to the Bane here for BPD, it looks like. Bane used to be one of the most favorite supports when you're against the Lone Druids because you just sleep the bear when he's trying to do the creep skip, mm -hmm. and then the creeps just run back to lane normally. But at the same time, that's it's still difficult. You you don't really have a good grip target, even with the with the new improved Savage Roar. Like he, you can easily interrupt Bane's ultimate. But I guess they want the strong lane support to maybe slow down the radiance timing. Then they need a hero that goes well with the sleep, like, like a lash. Like they need something that can insta kill, like two heroes that can kill him right away. Otherwise, it would be because uh, Bane alone can't really zone the launcher that yeah. well unless you sleep and you have a target. Uh, a partner that can actually instantly kill with two heroes. What else is there? Sven? Like Bane Lash is like the strongest. Sven is okay. okay. You just get roared though. After. Yeah, that too. It's very hard for you to actually position yourself. Do you think as EG you can accept giving Lone Druid a bit of space in return for running a drow? So that your Bane is stronger, your Enigma is faster in the jungle? Nope. Nope. I think you can't, it's really difficult to push high ground into Earth Spirit, personally. I, I think it is with every hero. I actually thought about that too, like, because they're on Dire, Ursa is not there, uh, so... Yeah, draw a way of getting Roche. Draw comes to my mind, and I know that EG, on the Dire side, they always try to try to somehow abuse the Roche. It's a very bad matchup against Spectre, though, that's the problem, because they, if they pick it now, then Secret can respond. Yeah. They already have a good lane support for Spec. Looks like Secret will pick up the Dazzle for their third pick in this patch. They've had 12 games on Dazzle with a 6-6 six and six record. I also think they wouldn't abandon Venge if they wanted to go for Drow. They would just... Yeah, just go for themselves. Take Venge Venge Drow. Drow. Yeah. So they're more likely going to go for something that's much more, you know, late game orientated, you would say. Instead of just trying yep. to play fa faster pace. They try to be more greedy. Five seconds. They're really low time. We were posing the question a lot in between games is what the Sumail hero is going to be, but we'll have to put that one on hold. Lycan is going to be it's, the fourth choice. It's still the do. same f with uh, Drow. It's just a hero that can actually abuse the Roshan. However, this hero provides a little bit more late game compared to Drow. You are much stronger in, in the later portions of the game, and you don't really need a mid hero that's a range hero to you know, benefit in the laning phase. You're much more open in your last pick for Sumail. It's actually very interesting that we completely forgot talking about Lycan yeah, in the last couple of series because we've been so focused Drow, on Ursa Ursa, and Drow, Drow, Ursa, Drow, Ursa. For the Roche. This is an EG classic. I think Arteezy plays one of the best Lycans in the world. I guess the number one standout player that comes mm -hmm. to mind is probably Siler for LGD, uh, which was also coincidentally the game they won against OG in the group stage. Uh, but Arteezy and Siler are both incredibly skilled on this hero. And it can go mid, technically, if they want to. Uh, any hero can farm against Yeah, Earth because Spirit. it's against Earth Spirit. Yeah. They know that already. So, yeah, that that sounds like a good idea as well, because Lycan definitely doesn't have any problems laning with Earth Spirit. I mean, I think you, you should still be able to bu even bully him, right, in the lane, because you have much more damage than him. I think so. The matchup is actually really good for Lycan. Earth Spirit's armor. Eh, he's like, what, two? I don't know, it's, it's <laughs> that, nothing to That needs to minus about. one next patch, I think. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's rare to find a matchup where Earth Spirit would be the better 1v1. That's I why think. he's not played as a call as much. Yeah, I mean, usually we'll see him like, I know, you see him a lot in the off lane. I mean, that's even where I personally like to play him, where you can get to those levels, and you always have a way to make your way out from trouble, but... Yeah, the Lycan will definitely get the upper hand in a mid lane matchup. This is a very defensive support duo from Secret. Uh, Dazzle plus Shaker. So they ban the Puck, which is going to be very good synergy with their lineup. Like usually, Puck Lycan is very good together because he set up the kills for the shape. When Lycan is shape shift, um, good, decent in the lanes as well. They're going to go for that profit, which will provide them with much more push potential. And 
I mean, like, versus there. Uh, yeah, arguably, 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 you could win your lane against Earth Spirit harder than the last matchup, which was bad versus Earth Spirit. This lane is probably much more even difficult for Earth Spirit. It's always nice to have a silence against them, that's for sure. Uh, and the and the very good thing here for DP actually is that. You know, when, when teams run DP mid, often you try to, if you gank her, you commit hard, because you know she has Spirit Siphon, so you try to gank with one or two supports and really just burst the kill. Their heroes can't do that. Like, it's a Dazzle and a Shaker as a support duo. You can fish yeah. or block her off, but I actually don't even think they can kill yeah, her. Yeah, that, that is actually there. a good point, because a lot of the games where we saw that probably struggle in the early game is because Earth Spirit is support, or they have a Tusk support. Yeah. And then they are 1v1, and it's someone rolls in and in the lane, but uh, Seeker are going to go for, for once again the dual call with the Earth Spirit mid and Team H this time instead of the Spectre because they have good mana void targets, I guess. Can but they stall long enough for Team H to come online? That's gonna be tough. When, he's, when he's a Lycan DPM, I'm not sure if I want to. So, so you would actually AM. prefer the Spectre over the AM? Someone that can fight a little bit more early on. Mm -hmm. I guess maybe they want that. Maybe that's the burst that they're looking for to actually kill the Death Prophet. It was just not a good Spectre game. Lycan eats her alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Death Prophet's actually pretty good against it too with the Exorcism. I would just prefer maybe Spirit Standard Spirit. Gyro. I think would be would have been much less risky. I would say. Yep. All right. Can we get some quick predictions here before we throw it over to the casters right now? We'll start we're gonna with we're gonna see a game three. We're gonna see a game three. You're thinking EG are gonna take it? Yeah, I think this is too much of a risk, and EG is gonna be able to take this game. Do you agree, Ben? Earth Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Earth Spirit. I see nothing wrong. here. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what the results are going to be. Game two now underway. It's Team Secret versus Evil Geniuses. We'll send it back to the arena now with OD and Draskal. Indeed. Thank you very much, Dakota. And here we have it. Game two. Secret EG. EG this time around. They said, well, we mastered the early game in game one. This time, let's stick to that. Let's follow through. Let's shut this game down as soon as we can. They've got the DP. They've got the like, and They've got the Enigma. They've got the push. And Secret, well, they say, hey, you want to run four Intel heroes? We want to look for the big mana voids. We're going to get Jackie Mao on the anti-mage. But as the panel questioned, is there going to be the time for Jackie to come online, Andy? That is going to be the big question mark for this game for Secret. You're against Death Prophet, Lycan, Enigma push, and you're picking an anti-mage. I would say that is more than a little risky, given Secret's position, but they are a game up. Very important to keep in mind that we are playing at best of three, and this is probably the best position to pick a lineup like this, where you're buying a lot of time for your position one. If you have a good space maker, and we mid on that Earth Spirit, Ben was talking about it, extremely strong hero. His first game was a bit shaky, but as soon as he turned it on, he was hitting three-man boulder smashes, he was landing huge magnetize after huge magnetize, and he managed to do very well. So if any team at this tournament can buy time for that NVAM, I think it's going to be secret. And that's got to be the scary thing as well, as you mentioned with the Earth Spirit, the fact that game one, that was Weeha's warm-up. Now he's, warm he's in game, the air. Yeah. That was the warm-up game for Wee. Now he knows what he's doing. And, and EG, oh, well, start this one off, Artur. Coming a Fisher to the backside. He'll himself out, and it will be just Samal and Wee securing the bounties here for the respective mids. And uh, coming into the lanes, I mean, we've already talked about the fact that EG, they're going to be able to get the ball rolling in terms of team fight momentum earlier than the side of Secret. Uh, just in terms of laning in the farm game, is Secret going to have a hard time here, or should they be all right in terms of securing space for Envy? Well, the panel we're talking about, the difficult matchup mids, the Earth Spirit versus Death Prophet, I do think that it's going to be a little bit difficult, but I don't know if I agree that it's going to be harder than playing against the bat. Because the thing about playing bat when you're melee is you always have to go and reset your napalm stacks every single time it gets to like two or three. Ooh, this rotation from Secret. Yep. Smoke up incredibly early on. They're looking for Good Samael. Are they going to catch him out here? Straight in with the heal ball from Pylai Dye. Samael, he'll pop the fair by the Spirit Siphon as well. Keeping him alive here. Can he get himself away? He's got the 310 movement speed. It might just be enough. Puppy, closing going in for Rose, I think. He's going to have to roll in in a second. And he's going to use it. It's going to be off. Oh, oh, it's Cliff. Oh, no, we are Cliff himself. Samael is still running. There's no creeps. There's no creeps. There's no creeps. Samael, there we go. Jackie Oh, Mal. my God. Jackie Mal. He has it delivered to him on a plate. Fast food delivery there. Samael straight down to the bottom lane. 
And MB eats it up. First blood there for the AM. But man, that was so unfortunate. He's like, I gotta die to Roshan, but I gotta dodge the, the rolling boulder. Oh wait, I'll die to these big creeps. That's why he threw out the Crypt Storm. He was hoping that there was a large camp there, but it was warded. So giving the kill to the potentially the worst possible hero to give it to. Well name. Oh no, just giving it something to universe. Forcing it back there, but yeah, not the, the best ways for Samael to start there. Unfortunate here for the man on the Death Prophet. And uh, we'll continue to see pressure being put on mid. Puppy hanging around here on this Earthshaker. Just uh, trying to keep as much control as he can of this area of the map and ensure that Weeha has a good start to this game. Yeah, I, I, the panel we're talking about how it's usually difficult to kill a mid when you have two defensive supports. But then Bed said something that kind of just really hit me, you know? He said Earth Spirit. So when you're ganking for an Earth Spirit who has levels, I think it's a lot easier to set up these kills because Shadow Wave suddenly becomes a very good kill tool. Think of something like Naga Siren where you make illusions and you throw a net on somebody and you heal bomb. Earth Spirit can put himself in melee range very quickly, so then all of a sudden your heal becomes useful in terms of ganking. So I think this is one of the few lineups where having two defensive supports can actually rotate successfully around mid. Now, it does require them both to go there. I don't think they can kill unless Puppy's Fissure is immaculate, and even then it could be hard. Yeah, right, we're gonna see some air walk up onto this one here. Just gonna force Puppy away. It should be fine here, Puppy. Yeah, the stone coming out from Wee, just holding the Samael DP at bay. But as you said, yeah, Puppy, I mean, he could be in a, a nuisance here, but in terms of killing, he's gonna need a bit more help. If we look at the laning phase, that's the fourth CS that Wee's hit. And you compare that to Samael, even though he spent pretty much, what, over a minute running away from the three-man gank that ended up first flooding him, he's still got more denies than we has CS. And even with Puppy camping the lane, he's not feeling too pressured unless the other support is in the area. And then bottom lane, obviously the, the best farmer on the team is Envy, but the you, the Dark Seer is still pressuring him a ton. Like, Universe is doing a, a pretty good job down here so far. Yeah, Envy should be alright now. He's got a point in the spell shield, headdress, and the ring of hell, so the region's gonna be golden. Yep. That first blood actually could be one of the bigger reasons why Envy might come out and win this lane. The Darkseer versus AM matchup is very unique in that a lot of melee heroes struggle against Darkseer, but AM has Spell Shield and he also has the Mana Break. So that could be enough to kind of push a lane in his favor, especially considering that First Blood pretty much secures him extra regen in the lane. And once he gets these two items together, with the Tango going, he's got 16 health regen. That's way more than enough to sustain this. We are just gonna head down and grab himself that bottom bounty room. Windsor at this point, again, the table's kind of turning in terms of the draw. The fact that EG, they're going to be uh, maybe expecting not to have full control of the lanes because they are running this Enigma jungle. Well, you say that, but they're actually winning their lanes still. I, that, that's they're, the thing. They're, they're doing winning, much better than, yeah. They're winning harder than they were winning the first game. <laughs> the only person on the side of Secret who is doing, I would say, even remotely well Sandy. is Envy. So normally these are the types of drafts where you say, okay, you know, we're going to run like a, a four protect one. But the other thing is too, Misery also needs a lot of farm. So I think this game, I don't know if he can necessarily go the Midas into Radiance route because he's going to have to be somebody who's present during these engagements when EG come knocking with five. I feel like that's probably one of the bigger concerns that the panel had expressed is this is a very greedy lineup from Secret. They have two heroes who need a ton of space and two defensive supports, and really only one playmaker, and that's the Earth Spirit. Absolutely, and as you said, just because it is favoring EG, when that Enigma comes in to join a lane as well, there's going to be heavy potential for EG to find the kills. Weeha still trying to catch up in terms of CS in the mid lane, but as you were noticing earlier, somehow just having a favorable time with the, with the crit swarm. I'm going to kick back in. Now we're starting to recover a bit though. At the beginning it was looking pretty bad because he ends up going up against the prophet who has pretty much full mana, full health, and we didn't have his bottle at that point. So, I mean obviously Envy getting the first blood means he doesn't get the gold for it, so he's not being helped in his lane per se. And uh, the rest is secret. Their whole lineup is defensive by nature. Like, Shaker, Dazzle, and then you have Lone Druid, who pretty much just wants to farm. AM is the same, but he's not really going to be wanting to come to too many fights, I would imagine. It, it's just a lot of time that Secret are going to need this game to really reach their lineup's full potential. <laughs> and there we have it. Level 6 on Fit. And he's ready to look for an opening here with the Black Hole. Top lane, Misery and Puppy. If he smoked up as well with Fit, seeing if they can set something up at the back of this one. And now, Artizi coming in. The eyes are out. 
the middle there here, and that's going to be the call for Fear to start to move in towards Puppy. They're going to turn for Misery. Misery pops the Savage Robber with the Brain Sap and, and the Malapis as well. Misery, he's controlled and he's brought down. EG. They'll take down the Lone Druid. And they do still have that black on, not needing to expend it there for that one. Yeah, it's a massive rotation actually from Secret as well, which is going to give a lot of space for Samael on this mid lane push. They realize the importance of keeping their towers alive. Like in this game, you definitely want mid to be alive over your offline tower, there's no doubt about that. But when you see a hero getting dove and you have the kind of support that Secret do, that is probably the best chance of taking a team fight in the early game. I mean, he's just going to pop Magnetize until the free point is that's how scared they are of getting pushed down in the early game. They just, okay, roll forward. I mean, he's going in here, Wee, but my PPD with a brain sap from Wee Ha. He defended the tower. It was uh, slowly just kind of, ah, uh, let's use Magnetize to defend the tower. Uh, let's use my life to defend the tower. Hey, Maybe not the play there for Wee. Holding map control. That's all that matters. Buy Envy time, buy Misery some time. And it is working. Envy's top of the net worth. So if that's the game plan, Secret have got that in, in control, but EG certainly with the three cores, and of course, well, Fear as well, with the space that he's received in the jungle. When the ball does start to get rolling, EG are going to have some pretty powerful push here. Just eight minutes in. Uh, Envy's going to need to have more health if he wants the TP to fight, too. He's only sitting at about half right now. Universe was still pressuring a bit, but he is eventually going to be forced back to base. And then he's pulled ahead, man. He's high SCS right now. He's doing a very nice job. Just how much time do they actually have? Poppy just trying to soak up levels on this top lane. So it will be RTZ and Fear. Moving in off the tier one. There'll be some backup on the side of Secret coming through. Pile I Die and Misery. Nice and nice. yeah, Poppy there with the Enchant Totem. And this situation is very... It's very passive for Secret, and EG are also probably not going to be contested for too many objectives. Like, they can go for Roshan, and I don't know if Secret can really do much about it. As long as they have the Vlads completed up on RTZ, which should be done very soon, he's already got the medallion. That Rosh is kind of free. I mean, we can jump in, do the suicide magnetize, similar to what he was doing mid when he was trying to defend the tower, and hope that you can win that engagement. But mech is going to also be done on fear around the same time as Vlad's is going to be completed on the Lycan, which means the heroes inside of the pit are not really going to be low. You're relying on pretty much your own team's damage at that point to be able to secure a fight, and I think it's also too much of a risk, which means that EG's lineup is going to hit its its highest level of momentum at a very early stage, and that's exactly what they're looking for. They just want to completely restrict the map control away from Secret, and taking the Roshan and then going for Tier 1 Towers is the best oh, way to do it. Not at all. Maybe thinking about going aggressive there onto Puppy, but a TP will come through. And there's backup as well for Secret. RT, he's just trying to put as much pressure as he can onto the Tier 2 top. Well, in, indeed, in terms of uh, this Jackie Man anti-mage, 4.5k on Envy at the moment. Uh, is there going to be a point where we'll see EG put a bit more attention in terms of trying to catch him out? Or at Dip's point, is the game plan just to continue looking for their own objectives and, and just to kind of not worry about the anti-major? Or is that, that's not the play here? It's kind of asking the same question in a different way. Because if you think about it this way, in dealing with the AM, you have two options. You can kill him, which EG's lineup don't really have the capability because they don't have any kind of flink initiation. Their lockdown is pretty much a Bane or a Silence coming in, right? So, with that said, they don't have the tools to really kill him, but they can kill Roshan, take all of his powers, and then the AM oh. feels scared to really go anywhere. Let's have a look at the AM, because they, they have smoked okay. up and moved Here's down here. They're going to lead in with the Fiend Trip. Altor with his walls. They've got enough damage, and they'll take down Envy. A nice little bit unfortunate there, because that smoke, it was spotted out by Secret Ward by Roshan. Yeah. Unfortunately, they got caught by that, but very nice use of the wolves. I guess you don't need a blink dagger when smoke and deceit and wolf vision gives you the ability to use fiend script. But this uh, this Roshan again, I don't think Secret are going to try to do much about it. Can they even get a, anything happening here in Universe? Doesn't seem like it. You know, some good things happening here for EG, killing the anti mage, getting the Roshan. Looks like they may lose the tier one top, but I'll be afraid that they'll be very happy taking. He does finish that one off, but EG, they're certainly kind of ticking the boxes that, that they need to, uh, to to get this draft working. 
No, this is exactly what they wanted. Yeah. Like, getting the Envy kill is just a bonus. Like you said, the, the smoke was under a ward, probably shouldn't have died that way, but at the end of the day, stuff happens, you know? Every once in a while, you make a mistake, you miss something. That's not really the end of the world for, for Secret Strap in this game. It's more just, of all the heroes to die, that's the last hero that you, you want to be off the map, because his Battle Fury timing and when he buys his blasts are going to be crucial in how much he can de-push and kind of split up the map to force EG to react to him. Because it's all about timing. Because of the fact that Misery is also opting to go for Midas, they're going to need even more time to recover from this early game. And they're doing the right thing. They don't want to take the fight against EG. A 5-on-5 five five engagement is way too much of a risk. It's easier to just avoid the fight, use a lone druid bear to push, continually keep Envy safe. Oh, we look, Cohen in it. Puppy setting this up with the stun onto Fear. Reha moving in with the magnetizer. Fear dropping low. Really a rude bit of Fear. Oh, he pops the back. Keeps the same alive for the time being, but he will still go down there. They'll give themselves one kill. Savage Raw sending the universe of BBD back. First laser, the Matterbot coming out from the east. Not enough. Then might lose Reha. Reha, he's still alive here with the combo. Universe is going to die. Reha stays alive here. And PPD is trying to find it, but he just can't. We are still alive. Triple kill for the Ultimate. And now the Crips one finally comes through. We'll kill him. So we are doing so much work there with that Earth Spirit. Dear God, dude, the plays on plays. Also, Earth Spirit, what a hero. Look at that damage. 2,000 damage, and he did almost as much damage as the entirety of EG did during that whole thing. Now, you could easily argue that that root pretty much just won the fight for EG, but you could also just say that Earth Spirit is, is Earth Spirit. That no other hero could do what he just did in that situation. That was disgusting. <laughs> that was, yeah. I, I, I get the feeling if this does go to a game three, that we won't be seeing the Earth Spirit again. Um, or do you think, well, I guess if it goes to game three, that's going to be the EG do win against the Earth Spirit. Yeah. But we have performance this game, yeah, game one we talked about. If it about goes to a game three, up. EG might think about banning it. It's hard to say. It's just, you know, it's a pick your poison thing. What are you more comfortable dealing with? EG showed last game that they can get a very big advantage even playing against the Earth Spirit during the early game. They made a couple of mistakes. Okay. Straight in with the Fiend Script. Universe yeah, brings did. him nice and close. As they take down the Shaker. Quick and easy one there for EG. Yeah, the, the Earth Spirit this game, very impressive. Like you mentioned, warm-up game seems to have helped. And those are the types of plays that can really bring you back into the game, because that's heavy commitment from EG. They brought everyone over there. They, they do take out the Shaker, which is nice, but they they are feeling the pressure, man. Do you think search for? It's going to set something up with the Nightmare. Uh, they're going to go for this one. Looks like Weeha with the kick's going to be enough to push him back. Get the Exorcism out, though, here. EG, they're going to want to stick around. They'll look to finish off the tier two, which they'll surely get through. Of course, does still have that black hole. He's yet to really find an opportunity to use that one. And we'll see if EG off the back of the exorcism and the tier two going down. We'll look for more, and it looks like they'll they'll play it cool. There's still tier twos to take in the other lanes. BBD going to be the leader one towards the mid lane. It's got a nightmare. On to MV. There is backup here. Sumail coming through, sets it up with the silence, and they kill him before he gets out. He's got the backup of Pylai die, and he's going to be fine. Silas not long enough to really cause too much of an issue for MV. He's out of there, Puppy. Trapped up here, though, and he will get brought down by the power of Arteezy. Now Arteezy moving in for more. Eyes on to Weeha. Weeha, he gets off the magnetize here. The Grave as well. He walks through the wall. Can he get himself out of this one? The Earn ticking it down. He'll be nightmared up. And he will get taken down. So Mail there on a killing spree now. MV coming in with a mana void. Not enough to kill Arteezy. Oh, MV! Oh, no! The crowd had a bit of a giggle at that one. At Arteezy. <laughs> The BM intentionally just lost that. Bit of a taunt potentially to EE, but... <laughs> yeah, I mean, even if he gets a kill there, and he ends up dying, I, I don't see how that's worth. I really feel like that decision in general was... He could have just been pushing top, you know? He could have been hitting the tier 3 tower, could have been farming EG's woods at this point. And he's the one that they're looking to and saying, okay, you gotta carry this game. You need to get to a stage where EG aren't able to just kill you with one Fiend's grip and you just split push the map, make sure that EG can't ever five man, and then maybe Misery, you know, picks up his radius eventually. Speaking of, he's actually farming very well, given the circumstances. 15 minutes in, he's got 2,600 gold and his Midas complete on the bear. There are still a couple of things going for Secret in this game, and Misery is one of them. I mean, going back to game one as well, Misery was kind of the stability that Secret needed to, to help them transition from a, from a four laning stage into the latter portions. Yeah. So it could be a repeat this time around. Uh, it's only going to be a hard one though, because we've just we've talked already, of course, about how strong EG can be at this point, and 
Uh, it's not going to be uh, anything less than what we expect for the draft. Vanguard now done a universe. You've got the Necro being scaled up, of course, as well. And it's going to get half of these boys. Well, secret with the smoke now. Even going to walk into an invis room. It's going to be nice. Now we've got Veil and Magnetize at the ready. Let me see. Let's see what secret can do it. EG oh, around the ancients is maybe really difficult for them to the jump unless Weeha can find some initiation. Fisher on to RTZ Weeha getting himself into position with his invis. He's not going to pop it straight away. RTZ is going to be the one to try and fight here with the ultimate moving in. There's your echo slam. RTZ incredibly tanky though. Puppy kept alive here by the shallow grave. Weeha in the midst of it all with the veil. Mike's gonna be popped, we hard, gotta get himself out of look two on the side of secret. RTZ starting to do a lot of work. That's gonna be a third one. And now potentially a fourth. We hard to fall as well. EG coming in with a hard hitting fight, four dead on secret. And they didn't have any answer to that one. And this lichen is is certainly becoming a huge issue. Coming up to 10k net worth. And off the back of a team fight like that, we know EG are going to be able to push at an insane rate. Yeah, they're pushing, like you mentioned, very strong. The Battle Fury just got done on the AM 17 minutes in. That's a little bit slow, uh, considering the lane wasn't too hard on him. He was farming very well at one point, tied. Still actually tied in terms of CS with RTZ, but... The main problem with their lineup is, just simply put, it's greedy. They have two disables, and they need, like, the Shaker to have Blink Dagger, they need the AM to have minimum three items. EG just have everything they need right now, and it's only 17 minutes in. Here we are. Let me kick out onto some ale. EG, how long are we going to stick around for this one? A hot easy just pops in. He says, I'm taking your racks, whether you like it or not. Gets the walls out, and I oh, certainly will. That's going to be the melee racks down in the mid lane. Or Poppy says, you're going to stick around for a bit, Artor. Locks him off with the Fisher, but Secret isn't able really to do anything about that. RTZ being surged up from Julie, but now we are in with the stun. The burst as well. Artor falling low. We are rolled for. Can they keep on to the right? The root is there. Who dropped the Necro units? The back of the wall. We are kept alive. RTZ just TPs out in front of them with the stun. Walk up and we are we. He takes down the Iron Shell from Universe. Universe keeping RTZ alive there as he takes down the two from Secret. And EG now 15 to 4. This is the momentum that they slowly started to build up and now they're hitting their stride. They're nearly 20,000 ahead of the side of Secret. And at this point, as you said, the greed may have just got the better of Secret this game. Oh, Puffy, caught in, caught down. They'll get an oh, oh, the corner on one of the old there. There he is with the black hole coming through on Danby. Envy will get the blink off. The buyback from Puppy here. Maybe that mana void from EE was the miracle that they were waiting for. And they'll be able to hold the bottom set of racks. It's a nice cash influx for Envy, but he's still got a bit of a way to go before he can carry this game. But they do keep themselves in it, and EG are forced to back. God, that was so much gold for Envy, actually. Just that mana void alone was almost 1,800 gold. That is insane. So he finishes the blast off that, almost has enough for the Yasha. That kind of puts him back into a state where he is competitively farmed, if not the, like, almost the most farmed on the map. He's only a little bit behind RTZ right now. The biggest issue that Secret are running into is the fact that, again, they can't contest any objective. The biggest contention that we saw was for, like, what, the Tier 1 mid, when we decided that it was best to just give his life for the cause and just try to defend the Tier 1 by throwing his body into the enemy. When you have to do that in order to keep your towers alive, you, you definitely are more of a, a greedy lineup than not. And it's definitely being showcased by the fact that EG are showing no signs of slowing down. They just want to push. They want to get the next Roshan. It's going to be up in under two minutes. And when that happens, regardless of how much farm Envy has, a lot of it also boils down to the fact that the rest of his team just can't really help that much. If Puppy had like a blink, for example, or the Radiance was done on the bear, I could see them defending high ground maybe like, I don't know, three out of 10 times, like 30% chance. But without those items, it's even harder than that. I mean, Fear even has BKB now. So you don't, you don't have an interrupt except for Mana Void anymore. Do you really want to pop your Mana Void on a hero to stop Black Hole? And we will be able to pop the guy here. And indeed, let's see if Secret have an Arzor Red Puppy. He's down in that. That was a buyback, of course, before in that previous fight. So he's gone for a good 40 seconds. Back him onto Misery, though. EG, let's see if they can find a second one here. Universe surges forward. He's been doing a lot of work this game on the dark scene. He's going to continue to do so. Onto Misery, and they'll get it. Arteezy will claim it there, and at the same time, EG with the Exorcism, Samael. 
Will clear out the bottom set of racks. There is a buyback available on Misery, but of course, as we saw, he was trying to desperately work his way towards that relic, and now he's not going to get it. 30 seconds without the bear, and this opening now could be what EG needs to close this one off. They move on to the tier fours. I'm going to see Secret coming back on the map, and it looks like EG will just play it, play it carefully. They don't want to overextend. They don't want to risk giving away another big couple of kills to Envy. But still 19 to 6, 21 and a half minutes in. It is definitely EG's game at the moment to lose. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be seeing anything like this in uh, the potential game three that's going to be coming out. I think it's fair to say that being double racks at 22 minutes in and not even being halfway to a blink dagger on your shaker, he even opts to just buy a chainmail because he realizes that there's a very low chance that he'll ever even get to that item. They're just dumping everything in the Eternal Envy slash Misery basket and just hoping that they can get enough items to stop the push from EG, but Roshan's up. Everything is just syncing up so perfectly with EG's timing. They get Roshan, they push, they eventually get middle racks, they get another Aegis after taking bottom racks, which they didn't even need the second life for in the first place, and they only have, you know, one more tower to kill and pop flame before they've exposed that last set of racks for Megas. And he's gonna find himself the double damage, and uh, has just finished off the Manta style. Let's see if he's able to achieve anything. We've got eyes on PPD found this. Uh, oh, very aggressive link in there from Envy. Well, forcing the PPD to back off. Rest of EG now turning up after taking down Brosham. See what Envy's game plan is. So he's going to keep it cool and try and get a bit of a split push on. Just working his way around this top lane. And see if EG do anything about it. They've got four heroes mid. EE does have a TP scroll though this time. Yeah, they're going to need like a big mana void. I think he has to ignore Black Hole entirely and just hope that Sue Mail is low on mana at some point and they can throw out a mana void for just that. Oh, oh, no, oh, MV. Okay, he'll turn for PPD. PPD has got a Glimmer Cake. And he does need to get back, MV. Home in a bit of trouble. The fortification coming out. The tier fours are falling. And now that was the TP cancel. So he is having to take the E Walker Shame back. Now, let's see if they can do it. This will be the final fight for Secret. They need something amazing to happen on this one. Samael popping the BKB. Exorcism's out as well in Envy. Getting himself in position. He'll start it away at Samael. Samael is low on the mana front, and mana void is available. And he's got to look for a big ol'. He's got to find a big ol'. He's silenced up. Mantis it off. Samael getting forced back here. Puppy's going to fall on the side. He's clear with the BKB out. Still has that black hole available. He's looking to get the opening. He's looking on to Weehar. And they're still holding at the moment. Samael pulls himself up. We are rolls across the magnetite doing it. Oh, he oh. missed! He made him out of the rage screen! Oh no, Envy! Oh no! That would have killed Samael for oh. sure! Oh, oh Envy! Oh, now he's been speed script. That could be sold into the wounds here for secret. And oh. the edge is back on Coming in. GG is called by Jackie Mao himself. 24 minutes in, EG perfectly executing the plan in this game, and the graph is just an absolute nightmare for Secret. Over 27,000 net worth lead there 24 minutes in, EG pretty much executing their lineup to perfection, yeah. and the anti-mage pick did not work out at all on them.